On this edition of From the Core, we warn you about the dangers of affluenza. We row down the Hillsborough River. And we find out why innovation and technology is a big part of Tampa's future. All of these stories and so much more on this edition of From, From the, the Core. Core. Welcome, I'm Nino. And I'm Maddie. We're pleased that you're with us. There are some exciting events just around the corner, like a major political affair in downtown Tampa. To find out the particulars, you may want to pay extra close attention to Brianna's report in this month's edition of Thought You Should Know. Howdy everybody. I've got a few pieces of information that's good to know. So here we go. Researchers say that the average American teenager is a walking zombie. According to the National Sleep Foundation, American teenagers require about nine and one-fourth hours of sleep a night, yet only 8% of them are getting it. With schoolwork, community service, and sports, it is hard for American teenagers to get some alone time with their pillows. To combat sleep deprivation, researchers advise teens to organize their time in a non-stressful way, break the habit of procrastination, and to avoid overcommitment. Political conventions are a major part of our national identity. The first political convention held in America took place in Hartford, Connecticut in March of 1766. Generally, a political convention is a meeting of a political party. During a political convention, delegates select like candidates to run for local, state, or national office. It just so happens that Tampa is hosting one of the biggest political conventions in history. The National Convention of the Republican Party is coming to Tampa in late August. Republican delegates will converge on our fair city in order to nominate a political candidate to run for the office of the President of the United States. Finally, do you want up to $10,000 for college? Well, Coca-Cola has an annual scholarship with your name on it. That is, if you are a high school graduate with a minimum 3.0 GPA and plans to attend college within the United States. More details about the scholarship can be found at coca-colascholars.org. I hope this information has been most helpful. If you missed anything that I have said, you can always look me up online at tampagov.net slash cttv. Once you get there, just click the From the Core button in the bottom right corner. I'm Brianna, and now you are in the know. If you or a loved one owns a closet full of shoes, many of which have only been worn once, or if you can't wait to replace your six-month-old iPhone for the latest model or hates to look at a bank balance after a long weekend at the mall, affluenza might be the problem. FTC reporter Alex has more about this crippling social disorder. Sisters Jackie and Jazzy enjoy shopping. Like most teens, they are tempted to buy and think about it later. Believe it or not, their spending habits can affect them for the rest of their lives. It's easy for many modern consumers, especially the youth, to justify spending money on something they don't actually need. I tend to like think I need that really cute dress I see in that mirror or in the window when I'm window shopping, but I don't always act on it, but I just, mom, I need that, you know? It's like, it's always there. Oftentimes, teens have the money to spend without the responsibilities of real life expenses and budgeting. Therefore, they use their money impulsively. I know that if my friends get like birthday money, they'll go and spend it like automatically on whatever's in style or whatever is like the coolest thing right now because that's just like they want to keep up with everyone else. Our country is suffering from a vastly overlooked epidemic, not your typical viral disease. It is a condition marked by rampant, unchecked consumerism. The disease, affluenza. Now, more than ever, teens are choosing to splurge rather than economize. One common example, school dances. Every dance we get, it's um, for the limo and dinner and 
dresses that are $200, $300 that I've never worn again. More so than adults, teens lack the ability to prioritize their investments. Wants and needs can like intermingle and it can be hard to tell the difference. Clothes is a necessity, but how much do you need? And I think people get confused on that a lot. Teens are growing up in a now generation that fails to teach the importance of delayed gratification, opting to spend now rather than save for later. Jennifer Massaro is with Grow Financial, one of Tampa's largest credit unions. She believes parents play a vital role in forming teen spending habits. If teens are taught from an early age to have high self-esteem and are taught that they don't need a certain outfit, they don't need a certain sporting equipment or a special prom dress in order to be accepted and appreciated, then they're going to learn that they, because they have what they need every day to survive, they, it's not a matter of keeping up with the Joneses. She offers teens this key piece of advice. There is nothing more important for a teenager, even a young child, than to learn what a budget is, how to create a budget, and learn that when you want something and you save up for it and you go and purchase it, you're going to appreciate that item so much more. And you're going to learn that there's things that you need and there's things that you want and you have to draw the line. If teens do not learn financial literacy, they will fall into the same patterns of affluenza that impact our country today. You only need to look around your neighborhood to see one of affluenza's most painful and common symptoms, foreclosures. Teens are taught by the media and advertisements that happiness can be attained by owning certain objects. Carrying this excessive desire for material wealth throughout life ultimately leads to isolation, emptiness, debt, and failed relationships as adults. What are the solutions to teen affluenza? Talk to someone about your problem. Learn and understand the difference between needs and wants. Keep track of your spending. Use a shopping list. If you see something you like when you shop, don't just go and buy it. Look for that item elsewhere and see if they have it for a lower price. Don't have the attitude of not wanting to use the same clothing twice. Don't shop for fun. Try finding other activities that cost less. Research and raise awareness to the poverty happening all around the world. Gain an appreciation for what you already have. And finally, always remember that the best things in life aren't things. As Alex just reported, excessive spending and the accumulation of goods could lead young people to the valley of debt. But on the flip side of the coin, many teens are looking at the current economic crisis and are becoming overwhelmed by thoughts of unemployment and increasing pressures from society to succeed financially. What is a kid to do? Here with me are Kaylin and Nico to provide us with their perspectives and opinions on this matter. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Time recently published uh, an article under the uh, Moneyland section discussing uh, certain teens' financial pressures and uh, expectations. Uh, they made a point that teens don't have it as easy as they may seem. Would you agree with this, Kaylin? Yes, I do agree with that. I think teens also have to plan because they're becoming adults too for their financial um, sta stability when they get older. So, Nico? I also agree because uh, as a teenager we do have to plan for colleges and look into financial aid and how we're going to succeed in our life. Have you experienced certain financial pressures or worries in the future? Um, I have. My dad lost his job last year, so our family has been not struggling, but you see that financial things can happen to your family and that the economy is real and that things can happen. So. Nico, have you also had these uh, financial realities in your life? Yes, I have, especially uh, now that I'm coming into my senior year, um, applying to colleges, looking at the prices. I have to work really hard for my bright futures and trying to get financial aid for the colleges I want to attend. When you speak of colleges and financial planning, uh, does your school offer certain classes or uh, programs to help you budget to save money? Um, not a class per se, but we do get to meet with our counselors individual, like one-on-one, -on -one, so we do plan with them about uh, financial aid and like how to manage our money in the years to come. Kaylin, do you think that teens who have friends or family that are financially struggling may take this as insight to a possible future uh, for their financial status, and if so, why? Um, I think that they would take it into consideration and see that maybe if their friends or family are struggling that maybe they can change something when they get older in their life to make their financial stability more stable. Nico? I also agree with that because um, 
they can they see the world around them, especially through their friends and family, and then they can also plan accordingly, especially to get a good education and get into the job market in the future. Thank you. And now it's time to move on to our what's trending topic. Kaylin, what's trending with you? Um, financial planning for college. There's three things that you can help for your financial planning. Um, number one, you need to talk to your parents uh, way ahead of time, probably if you're a freshman, and talk about your financial stability, what you can pay for college. Um, two would be if you know that you're not going to be able to pay for college, you can use federal funds and loans. Um, three, there's also if you're going into college and you still don't have enough money, you can talk to the college that you want to go to and their guidance counselor and see what can help you. Thank you. It's very helpful. Nico, what's running with you? Um, it's a program called the Police Athletic League, and it's a, a program established after school and uh, during the summer. And what it does, it takes in kids and has uh, uh, various activities among sports. And what we get to do as uh, volunteers is we get to become their coach. And that shows us a great deal of leadership in the future. And how it's grown over the years is when I was a freshman, there was only three volunteers for the program. And now that I'm entering my senior year, there's about 40 kids from my school that are going in and out every day during the summer, which, are, which has shown the program has grown over the years. Thank you both for being here today and giving me your opinions and advice on both what's trending and financial advice for teens. When FTC returns, we'll show you one of the best ways to view the Hillsborough River. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to From the Core. Over the last few years, people in Tampa have begun to talk about spending their time in parks and restaurants close to the Hillsborough River. And why not? It's central to what makes Tampa so special. But what if you had the chance not just to be close to the river, but on the river? Would you take it? Well, FTC reporter David did, and he is going to show us how to do it too. Here at the Hillsborough River, students are coming from all over Tampa to immerse themselves in the sport of rowing through a Stewart's Foundation. These kids are passing on the legacy of sportsmanship and teamwork. Through the Stewart's Foundation, these teens are preserving the sport of rowing in Tampa. Since its founding in 1991, the foundation has turned hundreds of kids into lean, mean rowing machines. Okay, make sure we get it out in the water. There you go. Good job. Denny Antrim, vice president of the Stewart Foundation, believes that rowing is a great equalizer and a good way to learn teamwork. Well, rowing is, is a very unique sport in that it requires perhaps the closest coordination between individuals in a boat and it's a very much equalizing type sport there are no stars it is the boat okay back into position these teens are part of a summer youth rowing camp established through a partnership between the tampa parks and recreation department and the stewards foundation barry thomas tells of the great opportunities with the stewards foundation in the parks and rec department's partnership well, this part of the Hillsborough River is very similar to what you'd find in a Boston, uh, where they row on the, the river that goes through downtown. Um, and the, the high schools and the, the youth in our community, based on what we're seeing today and what we've been enjoying since the relationship was forged, um, you know, the kids and the community are benefiting. You're going to take off your shoes. Being so close to the Hillsborough River, I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by. So I tried rowing for myself. Feeling nervous, I reluctantly stepped into the boat. As we push off, I thought to myself, what have I gotten into? But as we row along the river, I see the beautiful skyline of Tampa in ways not many get to see. I realize why so many crews make their marks on this beautiful city. Out on the water, I find what many have found, a love for the sport. I share my newfound love with my crewmate, four-year alum to the program, Corey McNair. How has rowing impacted your life? 
a lot so physically I'm more healthy and it's like more teamwork so I'm learning how to communicate with people better being around a lot of different kind of people that I'm not used to being around so my social skills went up a lot. These summer camps offer chances for newcomers as well. Maria Rios is one of the girls in the camp. She talks about what makes it so invigorating for her. I feel like I'm um, helping it move a lot faster and, and you feel the wind, how fast it's going and it helps with the muscles. It actually feels good when you're doing the rowing. Out on the water, I feel the adrenaline rush of it all. I really felt like a part of the team that day. The Stewart's Foundation, with help from the Parks and Recreation Department, all work together for one cause, preserve and grow the sport of rowing here in Tampa. Okay, walk in the stern, sway it up, bow, swing it out. This summer camp is just one aspect of what Stewart's Foundation is doing for high schoolers and adults year-round. Visit RowTampa.com for more information and get out there and give it a try for yourself. When thinking of innovative cities, most people tend to think about towns out west or in the northeastern part of the United States. That is true, Maddie. But little do they know that Tampa loves technology too. As a matter of fact, I recently had the chance to hang out with a group of innovative thinkers that call Tampa home. From cell phones to electric cars and everything in between, the unique varieties of technology in our modern world function to positively affect our lives. Inventors like Dean Kamen, inventor of the Segway, create these opportunities through their unique engineering skills. Mr. Kamen also developed an organization designed to educate and inspire children and teens about science, technology, and engineering. This program is called FIRST, which stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Since 1992, FIRST has hosted a robotics competition that attracts kids from all over the globe. In 2011, Tampa's very own students from Middleton High School's robotics team brought home the grand prize in the first robotics competition's high school division. But the first robotics competition isn't Tampa's only claim to fame in the technology world. And who says that technology has to be physical, tangible objects? Here at the Hackathon, the participants say it's the apps is where it's at. The Mayor's Hackathon was a two-day marathon event where coders, developers, problem solvers, and designers are given a 48-hour window to design and build an internet-based application. The goal of the Hackathon, and the apps developed in it, is to provide opportunities to help make the city of Tampa better by improving the experience of residents, business owners, or visitors, all through modern technology. Event organizer Siobhan Harley is excited about what events like this mean for Tampa. It's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it showcases the young tech talent that we have here. And number two, it will give us pieces of technology that we couldn't have produced ourselves. And it presents Tampa as a kind of cool, forward-thinking city. Mayor Bob Buckhorn started off the hackathon with an inspirational message to the participants while conveying his hopes and expectations. Our ability to keep our best and brightest kids uh, depends on us having a, an environment in which they can work in which their skill sets apply, where they can find work. Um, I don't want to lose any kids anymore to Charlotte and to Raleigh-Durham and to Austin, Texas. Um, I want that brain drain to stop. And part of it is doing events like this where the technology community knows uh, that we know who they are and that we want to support them. And out of this sector literally could come the next Fortune 100 company um, because these are young, smart, aggressive, energetic, young kids for the most part. Um, who want to set the world on fire, and I want to help them. But Mayor Buckhorn isn't the only one who wants a successful turnout. The participants are just as motivated. Being involved in any kind of project and help Tampa, uh, sign me up for it. That's really cool. While the programmers work their computer magic, event organizers are busy gathering city records, expenses, and other information to assist the programmers in their application development. The city of Tampa has made the data openly available and uh, Mayor Buckhorn has organized this hackathon to recruit the talent that we have here in the Tampa Bay area to generate applications and websites that would be beneficial to businesses, tourists, and locals uh, to go about their lives and improve their lives. The participants teamed up, brainstormed, and gave their best effort to improve the city of Tampa, all while staying fueled by Red Bull and candy. 
The hackathon is just the latest effort in Mayor Buckhorn's agenda to retain the best and brightest right here in Tampa. And by the looks of this hackathon, it will be the first of many to come. I'm Nino, reporting for From the Core. Wow, Nino, I had no idea Tampa is so involved and up to date with technology. Next time Tampa has a hackathon, you should let me know. Don't worry, Maddie, I will. We would like to congratulate the hackathon winner, Team Spark Tech, for developing an app named Hardtext. The app allows bus riders to request through text messaging the next three times a bus will arrive at their bus stop. What a great idea! Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back after this. It was so hard. I know. I think I studied, so I think I did. Hey! Yeah. Hey! How was your weekend? Oh my god, it was great. I have so much to tell you, but I'll talk to you later. I got okay. to get to class yeah. now. Bye. She hooked up with three guys last weekend all on the same night. I heard she hooked up with their ex. She is so trashy and easy. Well, over the weekend, my so-called friend, Chaya, hooked up with like five boys, <sighs> including my ex-boyfriend. Can you believe her? Oh, She's so, so disgusted. Yeah. Oh my god, did you hear that? What? Chaya hooked up with Sophia's ex boyfriend <gasps> What? You hear what happened this weekend? No. I Chaya hooked up with like 17 guys. At the <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, feel your mistakes. Now it's gonna be fire. Hey, Christy! What's up? Ew. <laughs> oh, look, no one would stop posting and tweeting about you all day today. It was seriously starting to get annoying. I hope you learned your lesson. Not that any guy would ever want to talk to you again. I think we should go. How could you betray me like that? I thought we were friends. Get over yourselves. I wasn't even at that party. I was at home babysitting my little brother, which you would have known if you had asked me instead of gossiping and making incorrect judgments. Grow up. Don't assume. Get the facts. Think twice before spreading rumors. There's more than just reputations at stake. Welcome back to From the Core. Every month, we like to recognize someone that's not too well known and has contributed to improving the city of Tampa. Allison is here with me to add another name to our list of unsung superstars. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for having me. Let's begin. Who is our unsung superstar this time? Our unsung superstar is Clara Fry. What is some background information on Clara Fry? Clara Fry was born in 1872, but we're not really sure where she was born. Some resources say she was born in Albany, New York, and some say Alabama. We do know that her mom is from England, and she trained to be a nurse in Alabama. What made her move to Tampa? She heard of bad health care here in the Tampa Bay for all races. When she moved down here, did she have a goal? She didn't have a goal, but shortly after coming, she found a patient in need of surgery to remove a nine pound tumor. And Dr. Winton decided to help Clara and they performed the surgery in, in her three, uh, three, room, three bedroom house. And they recovered, uh, he recovered in her bed. So she had this makeshift clinic in her home. What happened next? She moved from her three-bedroom house to this 17-room facility, and she had 458 patients to six nurses. So what did the city of Tampa think about Clara opening this clinic? The city of Tampa bought the clinic in 1930, um, and she stayed on the staff. So city of Tampa bought um, Clara Fry's hospital. What happens next? She died in 1936, around the age of 63, 64. And I believe that at Blake High School, there's a memorial in her honor? Yes, there's a plaque there for her. And what happens after Tampa buys her hospital? Well, now it's um, named Tampa General Hospital, and on the ninth floor, it's called the Clarify Pavilion. So how does Clarify impact you? Clara Fry is such an incredible woman, and she's so selfless, and she helps so many people here in the Tampa Bay. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. We'll have more from the core coming up next. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org.
Here at From the Core, we allow Mayor's Youth Corps members the opportunity to express their personal opinions. This time, Amber Orozco will fill us in on what it is like to be a part of a crew team. Crew, also known as rowing, is a sport with worldwide participation. Crew is when a person or team either has one oar, which is called sweeping, or two oars, which is called sculling, and row in a boat called a shell. The races are called regattas and usually held in a canal. Before rowing became a sport, oared vessels were used for transport and fishing. It wasn't until the late 1700s that people raced in oared boats. And it didn't start to appear in the Olympics until the 1900 Summer Games in Paris. Shells for sculling can be made for one, two, or four people. Shells for sweeping can be made for two, four, or eight people. The differences between sculling and sweeping besides the oars is the coxswain. In a sweeping boat, there is a person of smaller stature called a coxswain that sits in the front or back and steers the shell through the designated course. In a sculling boat, there is no coxswain and the person closest to the front, which is the bow, steers the shell. In the shell, you sit backwards so that the direction you are rowing faces your back. So when you look at the shell, the person in the very back of the shell is the stroke and leads everyone, and the person in the very front is the bow and steers. Crew takes dedication and practice six days a week. There are middle school, high school, and college programs. If your school does not offer a crew program, there are foundations that take rowers from any school. Crew is a great way to stay in shape and have fun and can be done for your whole life. I hope Amherst's comments have given you a positive perspective on what it is like to row along the Hillsborough River. Talk about positive. There are some remarkable and brave people that we would like to recognize. We would like to shout about Jane Bingham and Rebecca Sipen, both of whom have daughters who lost their hair due to cancer treatment. The women started a campaign called Bald and Beautiful Barbie. Their campaign caught the attention of doll manufacturer and maker of the Barbie, the Mattel Corporation. Mattel executives told Bingham and Sipin that a hairless doll will go into production at a future date. The toy maker plans to give the dolls directly to the children who would most benefit with them instead of selling them for profit at retailers. However, Bingham still hopes that Mattel will change their mind and make the dolls available for sale. She believes there are plenty of women and girls worldwide that could benefit from having a bald doll. Army Staff Sergeant Ricardo Seja was a beloved father, husband, son, soldier, and later graduate. He always had a passion for the military and helping those in need. In 1999, he graduated from Leto High School and enlisted in the Army in 2000. A few months ago, he was killed when a roadside bomb exploded in Afghanistan. He will be missed greatly by friends and family. Our hearts and respect go out to the Seha family and all the men and women serving overseas. Well, that's our show. We would like to thank all of our FTC contributors for sharing their opinions, experience, and knowledge. We would also like to thank the entire FTC news team for some great reporting. And of course, a big thank you to all of you at home and online for tuning in. All of us here from the core hope you have a safe and fun time during the rest of your summer break. And don't forget, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, always do your part. Tune in next month for another exciting edition of From, from the, the Core. core.